Hey, what's up everyone? Ryan here or MNR Productions with a comparison of three Lego sets here. These are the Anakin's Jedi Interceptors from 2005, 2014, and 2020 respectively. And it's worth adding that the 2005 set had a vulture droid as well. None of the other sets have any additional vehicles or anything even close to what the 2005 set had to offer like that. But let's go over some general information about these sets first here before we get into it. This is set 7256 released right alongside episode three in 2005, a wonderful time in the history of Lego Star Wars for all you nostalgia junkies. It retailed for 20 bucks, adjusted for inflation, that's $26 in 2020 money, 202 pieces to boot and your one minifig there Anakin Skywalker it did include like half a figure there I guess with the R2-D2 head but it was just the head the 2014 set number 75038 retailed for 25 bucks adjusted for inflation that's $27 223 pieces in that one with two minifigs there Anakin and a full R2-D2 this time around 2020 has seen much of the same with set number 75281 retailing for $30 no inflation adjustment there to 248 pieces in this set with again two minifigs Anakin and a full-scale R2-D2 so you can see these sets are all pretty similar but they have some subtle differences that kind of set one another apart for better or for worse let's get into the minifigure category here first and so here are the figures from every year of the Anakin's Jedi Interceptor. Here we have 2005, 14, and 20 left to right there. 2005, obviously the most different than any of the other set selections. Also a very weird hairpiece that doesn't really super accurately represent Anakin, but for the time it was widely accepted. He did have the chrome lightsaber hilt, which was awesome and maybe makes up for it. The torso print, very decent looking for 2005 as well, but you'll find no leg printing, no back printing and no second face on him. 2014 and 2020 are both very similar with possibly exactly the same R2-D2s. They may have made small changes to the prints, but you know, it's an R2-D2. You're basically getting the same thing there within the past decade. The biggest difference that you'll notice at those two Anakins there is the hair color using a darker color in 2014 than in 2020. But the most important difference, I would say, is the fact that in 2020, you can see the burn marks. Those are indicative that the character comes from Mustafar, which is not the case. It's Lego being lazy and reusing the torso print there. So 2014 is definitely more accurate in that manner. And for that reason, I think 2014 has the best character selection in 2020 because I will not not stand for the reuse of that torso the worst the playability on each set is mostly the same 2005 starts us off with a cockpit you can open up and thus place a anakin skywalker minifigure inside of it doesn't have the best design for a cockpit obviously it's more of a design thing but in the aspect of like getting the figure in there it is a little bit tight around there and then sometimes you can get him stuck in there um i've had problems you know with this set over the years where the chair will come out with him that can be an issue but this moves and that's kind of nice goes right into his face like he's taking a drink out of the starfighter i guess that's the point i don't know but you close that right up and he fits right in there and that's going to be a feature across all of the anakin starfighters so you can open up the little flaps here on the wing, and then you can also fold up the landing gear. This is the only set that actually has landing gear that can move on it. The other sets, again, can put an Anakin Skywalker in there and open up the little flaps on the side, which work great and look really nice in the open position. You have the R2-D2 head there, which does not swivel or move. You have some cannons on the front and on the side, little cannons, uh, and neither of those actually fire anything. There's no projectiles on this particular set that actually does anything. The wing can fold up I guess that's a feature but I'm not really counting that as one um, but yeah that is really all the set has to offer perhaps its biggest differentiator is its actual landing gear which neither of the other sets have 2014, as I mentioned, sees a lot of the same features. You can open up the cockpit to place Anakin inside. A much different design for the interior of the cockpit there. Drop him in there, and there you go. Not too bad. You can open up the flaps on all four parts of the wings here. 
There you go. And just like that, you're kind of in like the attack or fight mode. Uh, there are projectiles on this set. They're not loaded in there, but there are some spring-loaded shooters that actually go up underneath there and you can fire them off. So if you know spring-loaded shooters, pretty common feature in Lego sets nowadays. Then you can also place your R2-D2 into the side. Definitely a great little play feature to have him be able to drop down into there and you can move his head around into the four different angles, just like you could with the other set, I suppose. And you notice there is a lack of landing gear. That's because they basically use this as the landing gear. So it's, you know, a little bit less fun for a play feature, but a little bit sleeker for the design. And moving right on into 2020 for the playability category here, you can once again open up the cockpit, place Anakin Skywalker inside. He has to lean back actually a little bit further than in previous models, but he fits in there nicely. You can open up the little flaps on all sides of the wings very nicely there. And then again, with the R2-D2, perhaps a much stronger design for holding R2-D2 in, which is maybe perhaps the best improvement playability wise there. And you are gonna get again, uh, spring-loaded shooters up underneath Anakin Starfighter here. It's uh, the same feature as in 2014. So this doesn't really bring anything new to the table from 2014, um, but it does uh, make a little bit of a stronger thing here for R2-D2 to drop into, which is not bad design-wise. Perhaps the killer feature out of all of these sets, though, is in 2005, there was the Vulture Droid, and the Vulture Droid could fight Anakin Starfighter. It's really hard to argue against having two things that can go up against each other. That's something LEGO definitely tries to do with a lot of their sets, at least minifigure-wise. That's why with a lot of sets, you'll get, like, a huge clone turbo tank, and then a couple of battle droids, right? Because LEGO wants to create some sort of conflict in the set, and having this conflict in the 2005 set is absolutely huge. And I know it's not Anakin Starfighter, but the Vulture Droid does have some features of its own, ability to walk you can move the wings in and out of kind of the regular flight mode and the closed mode so that's nice there's no projectiles on it either but it's still really cool to have for the ability to have those kind of dog fights in space and that's something that I really look back on fondly of from when I had this set when I was really young when it came out so I think that this set definitely exemplifies playability in such a better way than the two newer sets even though it doesn't have any projectiles projectiles are what this set really is missing but still uh, definitely 2000 five best for playability 2020 second best and 2014 third best 2020 second best only gets the edge again because it's so similar to 2014 because i think the mechanism for the r2d2 is a little bit stronger which in the course of play is going to be better the Anakin Starfighter has been through one major design change that has gone from 2005 to 2014 there so over nine years obviously a lot change but the next six years, not so much changed. So looking at this original version, you have a really weak build. There's a lot of weak things with this that just aren't connected very well. Stickers add nice detail for sure. Nice printed piece here on the back actually. And for 2005, this is a great printed cockpit. They changed the design up a little, but it's largely the same on the newer set there. Perhaps the biggest downside to this earlier model was the fact that you just had an R2-D2 head plopped on top of there. It actually looked decent, but still, it definitely is better that you can actually fit the whole character in the uh, side of the wing now in the modern set. The underside of the build, again, very blocky, very bricky, not very well detailed or well uh, structured. Like It's just, again, just a bunch of plates put together, and I find the build to be somewhat disappointing. Even though I love 2005 for LEGO Star Wars, this build is obviously not quite up to snuff. So there's definitely that with the earlier model. Moving into 2014 though, we saw that huge jump that I'm talking about. You have so much stronger wings here and panels and everything. It's just such a stronger build. You could not hold that original model here on the very end like that. It would crumple in your hands, fall right off. Also better print design for the cockpit windshield piece here. Still kind of the same thing here though with the two in one with this other smaller piece on the front there, but still printed. You had a nice sticker control panel in there, which actually had a pretty interesting design and a much stronger uh, design to hold this on as well compared to the earlier model. They did switch over to stickers though, unfortunately, that's just a, a thing of the times. And then you see this is printed here on this set. What we're actually gonna notice as we go to the 2020 set in a moment is that it's actually a sticker on the newer set. So kind of something interesting there. You also notice the underside of the set, pretty clean looking, lots of inverted tiles to hold everything together which weren't present on the older set and you can see r2d2's legs just kind of flapping about you can see how easy that came off that's not going to be the case in 2020s i kind of mentioned a little bit prior but overall this design just way stronger and way better but 2020 does come in and refine a couple more things we'll start off where i was just talking about with the r2d2 you can see his legs no longer kind of flap about 
underneath the Starfighter, and you're also not really going to be able to push the thing through. So that's a great design change. They also added some little things here to kind of make the wings stop at the proper place. You have nice engine design on the back there. And again, a little bit of maybe a design change here. What they've done, you'll see there's like a black Technic rod there. And on the older set, it was red. I know it's a little thing, but it's something that I and others have, have brought up a lot that we wish LEGO would give these uh, pieces the proper color so they're not so, hey, in your face, this is the wrong color, it shouldn't be there, like it shouldn't be red there. And they did change it and use black here. So that's a small thing, but I really appreciate that. Um, overall design though, much of the same, very simple interior space with a, a much smaller control panel than the earlier model, which I actually think I like better, but you know, that's gonna be uh, up to you which one you prefer. I also think I like the color of the cannons here, just the darker gray kind of fits in a lot better compared to the black on the older set which kind of pops out more so maybe that's a personal preference thing there but I do like the darker gray here it's kind of interesting how they've taken three different colors from the same set same exact scene you have light gray you have black and you have dark gray so which is it I don't know <laughs> I would like to assume they have the more accurate version here, but then again, the figure says otherwise as far as Lego's attention to detail with some things. But the 2020 set is undoubtedly the better design of all three sets. I think that that is something you just can't make an argument against that 2020 really has it down as far as the Anakin's Jedi Starfighter design. They didn't change much, but they were fine, just the little tiniest things. And uh, you know what, fair game there. 2020, definitely the best design. 2014, second best. And 2005, the worst design, but nostalgia. If we take a look back to our inflation adjusted rates for each of these sets, we're looking at $27, $26, and $30 in the United States as their retail pricing. And so when it comes to value, I think it's pretty obvious which set provides the most for your money, the best bang for your buck. And it's a set that funnily enough, costs the least. That's right, 2005. It may not have the best design, it may not have the best minifigures, but it certainly presents an unbeatable value, including two ships for what is essentially the price of one, or in this case, less than the price of one, because both of these sets cost more than that one, which is actually pretty crazy to look back on and see that. 2014 at a $27 clip compared to the $30 clip, it's a better value. It's $3 less comparatively adjusted for inflation. I think that that is pretty obvious. I know it has a slightly worse design, but it's pretty much the same to anyone else, right? Like nobody's really gonna notice it for that $3 less. They switched over to that sticker there. You get the print there. Obviously the R2-D2 holder is a little bit better on the newer one, but the Anakin is significantly worse on the newer ones. So I think that that's a definite trade-off I would make. And so the set that definitely was the better value coming in was 2005, second best value 2014, and the worst value of them all. What do you know, the newest set, Lego, what are you doing? How do you keep going backwards? I don't know, but they do. And of course the classic old opinion category for the wrap up of this comparison here before we get to the final scores to see which one was truly the best, or at least from the results of this kind of pseudo test here. Now, 12,000 of you voted on my community poll on YouTube as to which set you guys thought was better. And surprisingly, I know, I hate to say it, but only 6% of you maniacs voted for the 2005 set. Good for last place. Rest in peace, 2005 set. Love that one, but fair enough. It's not the best build. I get it. The second most amount of people voted for 2014 at 27%, meaning the highest fan vote was 67% for the 2020 model. So as much as the Anakin sucks in the set, maybe it is the best set. That's a fair case to make. So I can see why that got the higher vote, although I think I disagree. I think the best set is 2014. I think, again, you get it $3 cheaper adjusted for inflation. You get the better Anakin. You get a largely similar, if not the same build in a lot of ways. If you built the two sets at the same time, you would notice a lot of similarities in the build. Maybe you can make arguments that you like some of the coloring choices better on the newer one versus the older one, but I definitely am super thrown off by that Anakin Skywalker. I've mentioned it a ton of times. I won't really talk about it too much more here, but that's definitely something that really throws me off that newer version. So to me, the best Anakin Starfighter set is gonna be 2014, the second best 2020, and just because the build quality on this older one, because it is older, just isn't up to snuff, it has to be the worst set as much as I love it for the nostalgia.
This video really did come down to the wire, but ultimately 2014 took the cake with 13 points, 2020 with 12 points, and 2005 with 11 points. I think each set does have its own merit to being really good, 2005, because it does have the Vulture Droid, just great value there for two and one, basically at 20 bucks when it was released. 2014 having the better minifigures, it was a massive upgrade over 2005 at the time, and maybe some nostalgia playing in at this point for some people in 2014, including myself, kinda. But 2020, definitely a slightly more refined model again, and I can see why people like it too. It, I think this one, you can really take any of the three and not feel bad about yourself for liking it. I think that's definitely fair. Not that you should feel bad about yourself for liking any set like whatever you want but just for making interesting videos i think it's fun to pit things against each other like this and i think this is a case where you really could be happy with any of these three sets in your collection and i don't really feel like maybe even if you have the 2005 version you would need to upgrade i think you can be perfectly happy with that one especially i think because it has that modernized cockpit piece already in 2005 that they've been using throughout the entire time if they had swapped that up and something looks significantly different now if they had been using an older style thing Thing. And at this time, um, maybe things would be different. But largely because of that, I think that these three models are all pretty much on equal footing. If you don't want to buy a newer one, you shouldn't have to. I think you don't need to upgrade. So that's my comparison of the Anakin's Jedi Starfighters. Let me know what you guys think with a comment down below. Did we get it right? Did the right one win? But that is all for this comparison of these sets. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you guys enjoy. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Oh, 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 oh,